Okay, I've got my bit of wood here and I've got my markings on it where I want the bearing to be. So I'm just going to start whacking it in there. getting it out. <laughs> I have to put it in a vice. <laughs> there we go. I'm happy with that. Just stick it in a vice and get the piece of wood out. There's no way that is going to uh, move anywhere. And in fact, what I've done is um, because that is the position that was in, that was the position that was in, I've, I've just divided that by two and that's where I've put it. So that should be fine now. And I will now bang the other, the other missing one in here. And then uh, I'm going to grease it. I've just made this. Um, this is just a bit of uh, old welding wire, uh, and I've put a bit of cloth, bound a bit of cloth to the end of it, so that it's rather like a gun pull through, you know. Uh, and um, so when you uh, when these bearings are all in, I'll um, grease this piece of rag, shove it through, and then pull it out, and that will leave a nice coating of grease on in the correct place. Um, and obviously, uh, I'll put plenty of grease on it so that it it will leave a nice ring of grease both on both sides. Uh, so that's how I will sort the greasing problem out. And uh, then we'll stick it back together again and um, just check that it, uh, that it all works perfectly. Uh, hi everybody, uh, it's just a little bit on the um, on the clutch on one of these machines. Um, clutch spring uh, broke on this one, so I've um, I did a bodge, which which was to um, make. Well, what was I? Uh, I got the broken bits out. Um, heated it up in the holding it in a vice and then made myself a new hook. Uh, the um, original ones here's, um, here's ones which I bought subsequently. You can get them in a, a packet of three on the um, from eBay. So these are the original ones and you can see both hooks face in the same direction so they go in like that. Uh, the one I had to sort of um, make a new hook at the end of it uh, has the hooks in different directions. And of course you destroy the tempering of the, um, of the spring. So it's only a very, um, it's a pro tem thing. But of course once you've uh, actually repaired it and bunged it together again to use it, uh, then you continue using it until it sort of becomes a pain in the ass. And of course, the the way that you know that the clutch spring has gone is that um, uh, the machine won't idle properly without the blades turning or the or the um, 
chainsaw turning or the strimmer turning or whatever it is, it just carries on returning, uh, whizzing around even at um, idle speed. Uh, but, and that's because the clutch is just uh, is gripping all the time. So uh, I put um, I've put the the new clutch spring in one of this one of these ones that came in the packet. Um, although to be honest with you, I was bloody lazy and I've I've put up with with it um, with it, with the gash spring in it for about um, for about six months. So. Uh, but there you go. Now the way, um, obviously, you can get at this clutch very easily by just taking these four bolts out. Uh, you've got enough. There's a sort of enough room in the in the cable and the throttle and all the rest of it just to do that. Uh, the problem is that these are there's a the, you need a terrific pull to be able able to get them onto the um, uh, into their proper position. So um, what I did was, um, just in case you need to have to do this, I got myself a nice solid steel bar. I got some um, uh, some copper wire. Um, I don't know what this is. It's probably about... Probably about one mil, which is the um, which is the m minimum you could get away with, really, because you're going to put a hell of a lot of pressure on it, and of course it it can break uh, if if it's a bit too thin. For instance, I tried that one, uh, and it was uh, just not man enough for the job. You could use um, th uh, thread or something like that, but it would need to be substantial. You'd have to be use two or three millimeter thread. Um, because you you do put a lot of pressure on it, and um, and then you've got to obviously stop this um, uh, turning round. You either you've either got to do it properly by um, taking the plug out and um, stuffing um, a piece of um, nylon cord into the um, into the cylinder, or or you can cheat a bit. And I I just cheated with a, with a by wedge, wedging a, um, a piece of, of wood in there, uh, you've got to be careful not to do it too much, too hard, because or put a metal wedge in there, because obviously you could um, you could put pressure on the shaft and bend it. You, all you need to do is stop it turning round, but you need to be able to put put it into the into a position which is uh, good for uh, for pulling on. So then I. Um, I'll leave a. I'll put a, a still. I took a still picture while I was doing it, so I will insert that here, and you can see. And then what I did was I just levered against the edge here and pulled the spring. And you need you need to have something reasonably flexible. So I will insert that here and you can see and then what I did was I just levered against the edge here and pulled the spring and you need you need to have something reasonably flexible uh, so the, uh, copper wire or nylon is okay because you when you when you pull it hard enough you need to be able to press it in so that, so that it hooks in then the piece of string or the piece of nylon cord or the piece of wire or whatever it is so that it uh, you can get it out again and then um, bang it in the rest of the way with a hammer so so all you do is you manage, you sort of you hook that in on that hook there uh, and and you can just get it in that way but it's still standing proud so then you can just um, get a piece of a piece of wood and a small hammer and tap it in so that it clicks into place and that ain't moving now um, before when, when I had the old spring in there with the, with the destroyed temper um, uh, I could actually lever these apart quite quite easily now I've really got to try hard to do it. So that's going to fix the job. And um, when you're putting it back, 
obviously make sure your handle is the correct way up um, and then you just um, put your four bolts in they're all they're all the same size so um, no problem there um, except if you lose them of course which I seem to have done a bit It would be easier if I uh, tipped it on its end, but of course uh, it's got fuel in it, so I don't really... You know, it wouldn't matter if I did it for a, for a bit, but um, I don't really want to do it for the time it takes to actually screw these up. So I'm sort of holding, holding it in my left hand and then just get one screw in reasonably tight. And uh, screw it all back together again. Tidy up your wires and your cable. And you're back in business. Um, so another little, uh, another little wee problem, which you, you know, you just, you may come across none of these problems, or you may come across all of them and a few more. So, um, so uh, anyway, that's, um, that's how I did it. And um, just levering against the uh, the edge of the casing it was was enough to get, to just get the spring to to hook in, and then you just um, you just make sure it goes right in then properly. And um, uh, that, no problem at all. Okay, um, so uh, I'll now screw this back together again. There's no point in you watching me do it. And um, I'll do these up pretty tight because uh, you don't want any of these um, screws holding the main housing to come loose. Okay, cheerio!